Hello and welcome to this video where we're going to be talking about OpenAI01. So this is actually not called ChatGPT whatever. You can see here it's actually called O1 Preview. So they've they've dropped the GPT, which is very interesting actually thinking about it because of what GPT actually means. So I think they're trying to move away from the association with these GPTs being stupid and actually that they are intelligent. So as you can see on my screen, this is the OpenAI page on slash O1. This is some very, very interesting stuff that they've got cooking, guys, and we're gonna have a little look at it in this video. So they have two new models, and the way that you can access these models is if you go on openai.com slash O1, click here, try it in the API. At the moment, at least for me, when I press try it on um, GPT Plus, it actually doesn't work. So something about my GPT, probably because I'm in Ireland, is it's not actually working just yet. But we do have the playground, so we can actually play around with these models. Super, super exciting stuff, and I'm going to talk a little bit about what differs in these models compared to other models. So let's get a little bit into this. So they've released two new models, OpenAI 01 Mini and OpenAI 01. This is very, very exciting times ahead of us. But one thing I do want to say is that although this is a really, really big step forwards um, in how AI works, what they've actually done is they've created a genetic um, workflow inside OpenAI. So what does that mean? In my opinion, what they've done is they've just made things easier for people who aren't necessarily that good at doing things like agentic workflows, or another example is prompting. Like you would have to be very, very good at prompting. You'd have to do chain of thought prompting. You'd have to do all these fancy things that now it might not even be necessary because of what they have done. Now, I do want to show an example of this. So OpenAI has just released a load of videos. And one of the ones I want to show you it is this one here. So this is Scott Wu, who is a Cognition Labs um, founder. And we can see if it's this video that I was watching earlier. So although this is not available for me, at least at the moment, I do want to talk a little bit about how this is actually working. So you can see on my screen here, this is an example video. It says thought for 21 seconds. And then if I click play, and then he clicks on the thing and it's, it's like um, code interpreter. You can see what is happening. So what the, what's really, really cool about this is this is actually, if you think about it, this is just an agentic workflow, okay? So it's describing the game, I'm detailing the game elements, a koala icon with arrow key movement, strawberries that spawn and bounce, and a squirrel icon that appears after three seconds, shaping the game, I'm gathering details on the game's layout, specs, and user experience, aiming for a brief yet engaging 10 second game gameplay loop, which was part of the instructions, organizing the code, I'm mapping out the instructions, ensuring the assistant will provide code in a single file, so read what that says, ensuring the assistant will provide code in a single file. Very interesting use of the word assistant. So if any of you are familiar with OpenAI, you'll know that a lot of what they do relies on assistance. So I'm guessing just by this sentence here that what they've done is they've turned um, agents into, uh, sorry, uh, assistants into agents, okay? So now they, instead of just being given a role, they look. it looks like what they've done is they've changed that to be um, achieving a goal instead of um, taking on a role. So achieving a goal is what agents do. So that's very, very interesting. I'm mapping out the instructions, ensuring the age, uh, sorry, the assistant will provide code in a single file and power of clarifying image requirements for functionality, updating Pygame. So here it sends an update to Pygame as in it changes something, okay? So something about step three meant that it had to do some coding to then continue. Crafting the solution, given the, ne given the necessity to provide code description in length, I'm ready to proceed and create it, crafting the game. So now it has a thought process. This is called, or I would call it, reasoning. And it's the most important thing that has happened to AI in a very, very long time. But the really cool thing is that they've made it work um, without fancy prompting, without coding, without anything, anyone is gonna have the ability to use agentic workflows using OpenAI01. That is a very exciting prospect for me, for sure. And it's gonna be very, very, very good for programming as well. 
So we're actually on tier five, which is why the which is why we can actually see O1 and O1 Mini. One of the first things I'm going to do is I'm going to test this out on um, Harbor. But instead of doing that live, because obviously I'm not going to just sit here and do loads of Harbor stuff in front of people. Um, instead, what I'm going to do is I'm going to do a very basic test, which I've done many, many times using um, AI, which is what I like to call my black tie essentials uh, test. We'll use O1 preview first. All this is, is it's a list of products and a list of images. And it just says, please include image links. Please choose 10 relevant products and designer links for an article about black tie attire for men. No AI, not even Claude Sonnet, has managed to absolutely um, pass this without any failures at all. A couple of things that happen, so we'll look for this when this is done. Uh, it will choose things that do not make sense for black tie uh, essentials, black tie attire. So for example, a blue suit would be a fail. The other thing is it doesn't actually give designer links. So you can see here, it does actually say designer links. If I do slash and look for designer, you'll see that buried away here, there are designer links. So ideally, if this um, O1 preview is as good as they're saying, it should do both of those things perfectly. So we'll see. It is still thinking, which is very interesting. This is kind of existential crisis territory, sitting here watching a robot saying thinking. Um, I'm not a massive fan of that, to be honest. I don't think they should put thinking. I think, think they should put reasoning or something. I think that will freak a few less people out, to be honest with you. Um, it seems that even though it does say that it should be available. Oh, hang on here. Oh, okay. Uh, O1 Preview has strong reasoning capabilities and broad world knowledge. O1 Mini is faster, 8% cheaper, and competitive. I do want to have a quick look at the pricing because obviously I can um, kind of give my thoughts on pricing if I can find price. Holy crap. Okay, that's very strong. O1 Mini is better at coding than O1 Preview. Very interesting. I want to see the pricing of the API. Let's see if we can find... Is it here? It doesn't look like it. Set model. No. Okay, it looks like the pricing... Oh, here we go. It, it is here. So it's... Ooh, it is quite expensive, actually, that. So it's $15 for 1 million input tokens. That's crazy expensive. $60 for 1 million output tokens. That is not something that we're going to be putting into Harbor anytime soon. This is much more reasonable. If GPT-40 Mini is better than Claude 3.5 Sonnet, then we may look at putting uh, 01 Mini inside Harbor uh, because it's cheaper. And if it's better, then obviously that just makes sense for everyone. So let's just have a look at Claude Sonnet 3. No, uh, yeah, um, pricing. Let's have a look. So this is three dollars, um, three dollars per million input tokens, and fifteen dollars for per million output tokens. God, OpenAI is not very happy with Anthropic. I'll tell you that much. You can tell they must have got pissed off with um, with Anthropic releasing three point five Sonnet because what they've done is they've undercut them by three dollars. This actually, this pricing structure doesn't make sense for the standard of um, LLMs, of models. This should be $15, but they've done that just to undercut Claude by $3, which personally I find that absolutely hilarious. We will see 3.5 Haiku and 3.5 Opus within the next two weeks as well, I would say as well. But, which is gonna be better? Let's have a little look at the result here. So I've never seen an LLM smash this, okay? I've never seen that. Okay, so it does have the designer link, which is a big plus. This is a black suit, so we will accept it. This is fine because it's uh, smoking pants. If you don't know, smoking is another way another way to say tuxedo. Uh, this is a pass because it's a black suit. Uh, you could wear a blue cotton shirt um, to a black tie attire, definitely. Light blue, you could also wear a light blue depending on what color your top is, uh, your suit. Uh, Kiton burgundy leather belt, that's a pass because you can definitely wear a burgundy belt. Barber Napoli brown leather shoes, that's fine. You could wear those. You could wear a black coat. You would not be able to wear a t-shirt, so that's a fail. 
And that's an inventor product, the final one. Eight out of 10 though, is the best I have ever seen a model do. So, I mean, something is obviously right here. Um, and I've never seen a model be so con so um, accurate with its following of instructions, okay? All I did was I just said, I've never seen any model do this before. Um, please choose 10 relevant products and designer links. Every single time I've run this, it finds maybe five relevant products and it does not give designer links. I need to look at this, guys. I, I Actually, I kind of need to go because I need to go and see... Um, how I can put this in Harbor. That's insane. I've never seen something do that well on this test. This is an obvious step forwards in terms of AI. What they've done is they've created reasoning using assistance and probably what most people would call agents instead of assistants. It's almost like they create an assistant um, and then it, it's almost like perplexity, right? We, we I've talked about this a lot recently. So um, give me... 10 items you would take to a black tie attire event. It's almost like this, with this pro search uh, process that it's doing here where it creates research tasks and then it creates questions to answer those research tasks. In my opinion, that's what they have somehow, or not really somehow, but that's what they've baked into chat, not even chat GPT, O1 preview as it's called. Open AI O1 preview. I think I'm going to leave the video there, guys, because I, I'll tell you right now, I've, I'm, I'm not lying about this. I've never done this test and had this good results. There is something in this. This is a good model. 100% this is going to change the landscape of AI. I'm very, very excited for that. I have to go. I need to work out how to put this in Harbor. Check out Harbor, harborseo.ai. Thanks for watching, guys. If you're watching all the way to the end, you're an absolute legend. I'll see you very, very soon with some more content. Peace out.